Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Jim. Expand your awareness. Today, we have a great topic, great conversation about you're so familiar with things called aura. Your aura speaks volume. We have, I have an expert today, and she's the Ayurvedic doctor and the practice in yoga, and she has the integrated medicine doctor, Dr. Nimisha Patel Josie, fondly acknowledged as Dr. N. Dr. N is a doctor of integrated medicine, doctor of humanitarian services, a pharmacist, microbiologist, and Ayurvedic practitioner by profession. So she is a professor for PhD dissertation at AQUEM, that's the abbreviation name, International Quantum University of Integrated Medicine. Above all, she lives a passion of being Kama Yogi, inheriting a legacy of Lahaj Yog tradition, pioneering her work in Yog and Ayabed through the lens of a quantum phenomena. That is a beautiful, beautiful word, quantum phenomena. She gives retreat and workshop around the world on decoding meditation. And we all know that meditation based on the subtle energy and movements. So, Dr. N, can you decode or throw some light on when someone talk about or picks up, up on the aura or new generation term, vibe? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, I express my deepest gratitude and I'm humbled to be in a conversation with uh, Dr. June, you today, uh, expanding the awareness. Uh, and uh, the question that you asked, uh, how much time do I have on decoding the quest of this life cycle? Oh boy, uh, we only got 30 minutes <laughs> for this huge <laughs> life cycle. <laughs> We will try our best. So hang on for this 30 minutes ride, right? Yeah. So uh, to your question, uh, the auras, right? Uh, in short, aura are kind of a reservoir of a subtle energy for a specific range of frequencies generated from each shit, and I'll talk about the shit later, which are the five bodies or the koshas. So aura are a reservoir of a subtle energy for the specific range of frequencies generated from each shit or each bodies, which are the five bodies, resulting in an egg shaped hello like many people right that's what when people talk about the aura it's like the egg shape hello uh, around an individual's physical body right uh, does that make a sense like summing it up right so now aura reveals an individual's health as a wholeness and we're not talking about just the physical health this is where the aura from the ancient scriptures. So uh, the concept of uh, aura or the auric field traces back to almost every ancient tradition. Right? Now, my niche is the Eastern tradition, you know, the yoga and Ayurveda, as I mentioned. Right? So tracing it back to the 5,000 years back when the Vedic scriptures were written, aura was mentioned, right? So the aura, again, is accumulation of the five bodies. The ancient scriptures, I do have to say it in Sanskrit to say it in English. So it was the Annamaya, then Annamaya is our physical body, right? Which relates to the food or the physics or gross matter, the earth. Right? Then, then it's the pranamaya, right? which is our vital body. Right? Now the vital body consists of the air, prana, chi, or the life force. Right? Then there is something called the manomaya, which is 
mind, right? But the mind also is still a matter which consists of the five elements as well. Like one of them is the ether, or we, some people call it the astral body, right? Uh, which is related to the feelings. And the fourth one is a vigyanamai, which is the intellect. Now, the intellect uh, is um, the physical, vital, mental, emotional, right? The emotional body, which discriminates between me and you. Right? So that's the Vigyanamai, right? And then the fifth body is the Anandamai or the beliefs or the spiritual body. So again, the aura <clears throat> is a reservoir of the subtle energies, right? For the specific range of the frequency which gets generated from all these five bodies, right? Anandamaya, Pranamaya. Manomai, Vigyanmai, and uh, Antamai, right? Physical, vital, mental, emotional, and spiritual, right? So the aura is the cumulative health of an individual reflecting around them as a wholeness, right? So now we are talking about five bodies, right? Usually, I think all of us today, including myself, not excluded, you know, uh, many times go back and forth and there is a lot of struggle that we all basically live in our physical body, which is the cellular body, right? Which is the Newtonian law, right? And when I mentioned that auras are the reservoir of the subtle energy, subtle meaning it is so subtle that we are not able to measure it. Remember Einstein said, what we cannot measure doesn't exist? <laughs> Correct, right? Yeah. Because how do you see the vibration? Well, what do you see the vibration, the frequency? <laughs> Had been, uh, and thank you to Einstein, it, you know, it, it resolved a lot of um, uh, things during that time, even now. But why we struggle explaining this whole auric field from the scientific perspective is because we had not been able to measure it. And uh, uh, we had only been able to measure something which was at the speed of the light given to us as E equals to mc square according to Einstein. And his statement, if we can't measure it, it doesn't exist. But now, over more than a hundred years of a quantum principles being proven, people like us, you know, I know you are the quantum university student as well, right? So, uh, past student, you're a doctor, you know, so people like us and many scientists and physicists, you know, now have been trying to explain all these subtle energy concepts, right, using the quantum phenomena, right? So uh, going back to, as I said, that this concept traces back to the all the ancient traditions. And because we've been trying to make a sense out of it, actually in 1994, NIH, the National Institute of Health, uh, gave a word called the biofield to describe this energy field and information that surrounds and interprets the whole human body, right? And uh, I'm sure you have used the biomodulators to indirectly measure the aura in your practice or make a sense of it, right? So this whole biofield, the name, newer name given to the subtle energy, right, by the NIH, is composed of both measurable electromagnetic energies, right? And uh, later on, I want to weave this beautiful social interaction, you know, about the electromagnetic energy, why people uh, 
connect and why repel. I think that should be very, very interesting. That was the one, one of the first question, like, like why people come together and why some of us, even though we are into the beautiful families, we repel, right? So this biofield is composed of a both measurable electromagnetic energy and hypothetical subtle energy. So we have the biomodulators, for example, the biovel, I'm sure you use it in your practice also, which uses the Kirlian photography, right, to measure that field. And uh, we're still like not directly measuring it because it is beyond time and space, right? But we are able to kind of indirectly measure it and bring our interpretations into it. Right? So that's about the aura. Now, um, aura, as I mentioned, it consists of the five bodies, right? Physical, vital, mental, emotional, and spiritual. We'll get rid of the Sanskrit word now because, you know, this is better to understand as we are evolving, right? So that aura subtle body now in that subtle body we have five bodies right so this all these five bodies and the accumulation of it consists of how does that frequencies get generated and be radiated that we feel around the people. So there is something called, I think in almost all the traditions, meridians or the nadis, right? So our subtle body consists of five bodies. One of them is auric body, right? And the other one is the network of channels or the nadis in a tr which kind of um, uh, through which the prana or the chi flows and travels. So those are nadis or the meridians. In tradition, uh, traditional Vedic uh, philosophy, there had been 340,000 nadis or the channels mentioned. Yes. And uh, uh, among them, three are most commonly discussed. Now, these three go right along the side of the spine, uh, named as Ingala, Pingala, and Shushmana, which is in the center. So those people who are aware of all the chakra system, they know. So Nadis, 340,000, three commonly discussed now. The location of them are right along the spine. And because those three major ones coincide along the spine, they also correlate with the positions of the chakras or the spinning wheels. Like this that make a sense? And uh, just to throw it in, uh, today people know more about the seven chakras. There are actually 22 chakras. This is where we call is expanded awareness, right? So now the expanded, so the third, we call about the third dimension, fourth dimension, and the fifth dimension of expansion, right? So when we talk about chakras at the being seven, at the location of the physical body and the spine is this third dimension. Then there are three above and three belows, making it 13. So some people bring their awareness to that, but then uh, there is a deep diving into the 22 chakras. That's, uh, you know, I give that chapter to somebody else, right? Yeah. So summing it up about the aura and bringing it down to a little bit about 
how the chakra system is connected and how the all the five bodies are connected with it, right? So the physical body, as you know, the cellular body, vital body, which is the flow of the prana. And at that vital body, we have the chakra locations also, right? And uh, those chakras are actually the blueprint of her, that expanded awareness blueprint for the vital organ functions. They are not organs. The blueprint for the function for the physical body to operate. That's just like before you build a house, we need to have a blueprint architect, right? That has this, the, the, this the imagination that's going to be that because without that the blueprints, you cannot build the building, which is the matter, the material, the physical body. <laughs> exactly. Right. So uh, this is where the beautiful whole uh, quantum phenomena, right, comes in that uh, uh, sometimes um, I give an example, same way, just like what you did about the house and the blueprint, right? So uh, the physical body, the house, right? And the house was built from the blueprint, right? Which are those location of the chakra or the function, like right? this is how it, it should be. But who made this blueprint? Right? I live in this house, the physical body, but who made this blueprint, right? Someone else, the engineer, made this blueprint, right? So that engineer used its mind to create this blueprint. Now, I'm not trying to separate person one or person two. I'm trying to look into our five physical bodies, which as a human today, we have become so disconnected, right? So we ourselves are the product of our own blueprint, right? So uh, that mind creates the blueprint and then we go into the second and the third and all that dimension. So the physical body, the vital body, the chakra, the blueprint of the organ functions, and you go beyond the mental, which actually is going to, as I mentioned, like discriminate between you and me and start creating this physical entity, physical body. And then when we go above, right, it's what we call is a seventh chakra or the, the, and that literally is kind of a bridge, a connection, right, where the blueprint actually gets created. So in a quantum phenomena, when we use these four principles, right, and I won't go much into the function of the chakras because I think so many people do talk about it, but let's talk about this whole auras and where does the chakra fall in, right? So there are four principles of the quantum phenomena, downward possession. This is where we are talking about the blueprint up here. You are the product of your own blueprint, right? So you have an ability Newtonian physics worked from the cellular level to up, right? The today, the medical practice, I'm included into it. It's like something wrong with your physical body. Then, okay, well, let's do the, the test, the vital tests, which are the blood work and this and that. And then we say, well, the, the patient would say that, well, I'm not feeling good. That's your vital feeling, right? But you go to the doctor do the blood work. It's like, you know what? Yeah, you're not feeling good. We did the test, but everything is fine. You'll come back when you're actually more sick and we can measure how sick you are so we can prescribe you something. <laughs> yeah. Right? So that's the field. And I make a humor of it because I'm a part of it too. Right? Yeah. Yes, as a pharmacist before, you, you knew about the practice of the, you know, Newtonian law. <laughs> right, yeah. So, uh, expanding this awareness, which is this beautiful, ancient, you know, science, right? So, 
again, the blueprint gets created here. This is where the meditation comes into the practice and focusing and connecting. And then above that is your bliss or the spiritual body, right? So the physical, physical body, the vital, which are the chakras, which has the blueprint for the organ function, mental, which gives the meaning to the feeling, right? So we say mind giving meaning to the feeling affects your organ functions. Right, and and um, so physical, vital, mental, and then the emotions, also because your aura would reflect your emotions, right? Like I get along with someone, I want to come and hug that person, but even if it's my brother or sister, but if I don't get along, I want to repel. So these are the feelings, right? And the feelings also have the blueprint. And according to that, you know, you start generating your organ functions too. So mind giving meaning to the feeling affects organ functions. And chakras are at the location of the organ function systems. Right? In short, the lowest one is uh, what we call is muladhar, the elimination system then the Swadhisht, which is the reproductive organs, uh, then the Manipur, which is the digestive system, then the Anhad, which is the circulatory or the cardiovascular or the heart, Vishuddha is the endocrine, right? And then the Ajna is your, you know, third eye. People kind of mistake it as an intuition. Intuition is here that you draw in. This is almost like kind of bringing an awareness of who am I, right? questioning who am I, right? And this is where you bring in the awareness and then letting that awareness expand without a duality, without you and me, right? This is where connecting it with those emotional bodies and feelings and, and all that. And then, you know, we bring in certain tips to help us to expand those uh, awareness. So I hope... Uh, I was able to somewhat answer or decode about the aura or the vibes. Where do they come from? Uh, it is the accumulation of our physical body, vital body, which is the chakra system, the pranic body, which is the breath or the life force, right? our emotional body, right? which gives the meaning to the feeling and our spiritual body which expands into the unified field or the oneness so when someone radiates that aura that actually is the cumulative wholeness of the health that that they are radiating hmm. That really totally makes sense. Kind of coming together, whole. I think you, how you explain all the different layers of the body, how it comes together, that really become a totality of this whole energetic expression as an aura, right? That you know the auric field. And I like what you say was the so somebody who the people who suffer from chronic disease and chronic stress, and they can name it, label them in a Western medical way, but. That's the we are talking about the matter issues. You know, oh, I have this disease, diverticulitis. I get a cardiovascular issues, then liver disease. Well, you know, that's as a Newton, Newtonian model. Yes, you can see the cause, the, the effect. But what's the cause? Like, say, from the downwards causation perspective, that the blueprints and the access of this consciousness, how that blueprints bring into the physical matters. So if there's somebody suffering from certain patterns of the disease that created, that's because the blueprints has been, that they're giving the wrong meaning to the feeling they manifest into as a physical matters, correct? Exactly, exactly. So uh, the tradition, uh, right, this, this one phrase in the yogic practice, chitta vritti nirod, right? That any of those mind-giving meaning right either it's the right meaning or the wrong meaning right so any of those turbulences arising from that you know rising above that into the stillness 
is the entire practice of yoga, which is being one with the universe and melting this duality of a me and the disease, right? Yeah. So sometimes the other day I was talking to someone and I said, if I am the disease, how can I hate myself? I should love myself, right? And the moment, this is one of the tips, and people started laughing, right? So it's like, well, if I am the disease, uh, this was actually about the microwave, right? That I won't go into that. But uh, if I am the disease, how can I uh, hurt myself? So I begin loving it. And there you are changing how your mind is giving the meaning to your feeling, right? And you're able to change your blueprint. Like, remember Joe Dispenza, I think, right? Like, you are not slave of your genes any longer, right? So, uh, actually, in my practice, there is a few things that I always mention. I say, I'm not looking into your disease. So, in the form, I hardly ask, like, about what do you have. I say, I'm looking into your potentiality, right? So not the disease. You don't have to put the list of a disease like what you just said, right? Don't put the list of a disease. Say, what do you have? Do you have a hope? Why did you come to me? Right? And almost everybody, right? And one of the the question that I actually have into my intake form is uh All that you know and have applied have failed. Where do you turn? When all that you know and have applied right, have failed, where do you turn? And this is where I'm opening their faith or the belief system, opening the gate for the downward possession to change their blueprint. So, do you have a hope? Okay, let's start building you on that hope. Let's change this mindset, right, about just catering this physical body because ultimate healing literally comes all of us know, right? Like, even when the space shuttle fails, what do the scientists say? Oh, Jesus, right? Right? Or, oh, God, right? Like, on, on the right, when, when, all that they built, right, and failed, right? It's like, oh, Jesus, or, you know, oh, God, right? So what are they doing? You know, they are, they are opening that field, which before we used to call it a dark matter, again, which has all the blueprint. It's just that they used to call it a dark matter. Now we have changed after this whole quantum theory or the physics, we call it invisible matter. It's there. All the blueprints and everything is available to you if you can create an access to it. It's just invisible. So we don't, even in the science or, the in, or in the physics, we don't call it the dark matter any longer. We call it invisible. So thank you. Like this is how we are evolving and trying to bridge the gap between the whole beautiful ancient science and the modern interpretation of it. Right? Yeah. So, yep. So to, to you, you know, just extending to like not naming the disease, right? But looking into the potentiality because your health instead of living like we go through this all the time don't we uh during the whole pandemic like is this right is this wrong you know should you wear the mask should you not wear a mask uh, the vaccines this that i won't go into the detail but that's the constantly changing fact right like and then people would like who would you trust trust the self right this is where you can find your own answers, right? So instead of being just stuck into the physical body, if every individual takes their own responsibility of connecting with themselves and expanding their awareness, not just 
at this cocooned, suffocated level of being an individual, but we say that you are a complete universe. So in an ancient scripture, uh, I would just uh, translate it in, uh, in uh, English. I, so it's actually then individual's existence in relationship with universe. As the universe is complete, so are you complete when you have this complete coherence of the five bodies. You are just a smaller part of that bigger. And uh, in uh, ancient scriptures, the way it says that if there is a dot, just like a dot, right? That's the universe. And if I put dot right on it, there is still a dot, right? That is me. Right? So I'm a part of that big and complete, yet I am a big and complete because I have a whole universe. So that's what basically like the aura and an extension of the aura and disease and the naming of the disease and uh, uh, again it's the humor but today we have the protocols okay you know this test this disease this medication right and what is it called following the manuals like the technicians right the whole awareness Right, the expanded awareness is at that individual level that we should be uh, analyzing ourselves and expanding as a whole. Yes, very good. This is the all the tip and the all explanation. Your you, your explanations and knowledge you're sharing that's so helpful because those are the important information that people have to kind of start accumulating. Now, sudden this awareness, the shift happened. That means that different belief might show up, different perception shows up, which creating a new blueprints, the way you look at the body, which emerges the new, you know, the future self, which is a true self might shows up. So beautiful. Right. Yeah. And I mean, we are, we are re literally into the need of this beautiful shift, right? Like uh, every philosophy or everything, you know, stands for a couple of years, like the hundred years or the century, but the universe is constantly expanding and evolving, right? So right now we do need that shift of the extended awareness in order to keep up with the universe, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yes, <laughs> we can't stuck and stagnate, yeah? Because everything's moving. No, we need to expand as well. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. And uh, would you give us like a three simple tip steps that they can start today to start shifting or start creating this new awareness? Uh, that's that's a good thing because I always feel that uh, people like us keep on talking about the theory, right? The scientists keep on talking about the theories, right? Like I live in the town where we have the one of the largest. A nuclear lab they do all these experiments on an electromagnetic field they smash the protons now they are even smashing the electrons which is literally the movement that we call right like the how you will observe that electron you can collapse it because the electron exists into the possibility and the actuality at the same time that's that beyond speed of light right and the way you observe, an individual observes, this is what we are trying to do, expand awareness. And it's instantaneous. This is where we have sometimes the mystical healings, right? People call it, it's the mysterious healing, but these are all quantum physics and how to, yeah. So again, um, they are smashing the, the, the electrons now, trying to find or measure. So we know a lot of theories, but, the practical tips, right? So people like us, like, okay, let's come down to the physical body because we actually do live in the physical body into our social lives too. So uh, I would give three tips, which probably we can practice it together, like about five minutes, 
meditation, which would involve the, the little breath, the breathing, uh, the little um, the meditation, which involves the breathing in a little bit of the chakra and the aura, and then uh, honoring yourself. So this will be like the three tips I would give, and you could do like a five-minute meditation. But before that, I want to bring in this beautiful humor like about when we expand our awareness and how you want to use these tips that I will be giving later. So this beautiful humor about how many of us, right, like um, we don't want to go into some social gathering or say, I don't want to go to my in-law's house, right? Because although we are in relation, well, you know, my husband, who I love, right, is in a relation, but I kind of repel, right, with the energy. Or let's say my own brother or a sister, right, and we're, we're related with the blood, but like I'd rather meet my friend than meet my sister, right? So we all have this, right? So now we are talking about this aura and uh, electromagnetic field so have you ever seen the magnets right we all have seen the magnets right like how the north and the south so so these are all electromagnetic waves right like in between the neurons we have the field the electromagnetic field which kind of sends the signals and the other one picks up again you know the lot of uh, analysis interpretation feeling name it whatever happens so this is all the magnetic field and if you just think about the physical magnet, right, the, the north and the south, like the opposite would attract, right? And then the similar will repel, right? Like the north and the north will repel, south and the south will repel, but north and the south would kind of like just attract. So the similar law uh, that they were able to measure and we see it like sometimes, you know, you should even keep the magnet into your pocket when you go into those those social visits, you know, just as a humor. Right. So. Right. And and justify it. It's like, OK, you're my sister, but you know what? We are north and north. So, OK, right. You know, could I go into the other room? Right. And. You know, wherever are fine north and south, and we are good, right? So just as that simple humor. So where you can apply these three tips that I wanted to mention was, okay, say you go into this type of situations, right? But when you know that the other person's aura or the vibe, that's what, that's what the vibe word was brought to me by my son last year. When I say that, you know what, I don't want to, I don't feel like to go there because you understand that that energy is, you know, I don't feel right with that energy. And my son said, oh, yeah, I understand, mom. You know, it's the vibe that and I'm like, oh, it's called the vibe now, you know, and our old people, we call it the energy. Right. So coming back to when we have the situations like this, if we apply this, and you don't have to like apply it right then and there, you practice it. When you practice it, remember the reminder of any incident brings the exact same hormonal secretions and the triggers and everything. That's why people have the PTSDs. So, so the PTSD not supposed to be the traumatic, but it can be blissful if you're practicing these three tips Right. So instead of saying it the traumatic, right, I call it the PTSB, the blissful. Blissful. Right. So label it. Yeah, but unlabel it. Right. And you can kind of not only with the understanding and expansion of your awareness, restoring and saving your energy but you're also helping that person which 
may not understand and it's not your job to make them understand or not like we say take your own responsibility and your aura will reflect right so we can apply this into anywhere right like by kind of creating a little egg you know around us practicing it and restore keeping our energy restored in a positive way and at the same time you know understanding and not feeling guilty about that oh you know i should be connecting with that person but uh, i don't feel like to and you feel guilty because that's either your sister right and you want to be with your friend right so you stop that guilt with you with that bigger understanding or the expansion of it and that you're not only helping yourself but you're also helping that other person like that other person i'm sure may not be able to speak or express but they may be feeling the exact same feeling that you're feeling right so why not help it out silently right it works at the both end and i would say that this is my personal experience in our practical life too and over a period of time things start soothing out right so okay so we can go to the three simple tips um we could do like say maybe three minute or it can expand into the five minute uh, meditation uh, which is weaved into the breath right so let's see how long uh it goes uh, uh, before practicing we always check our posture right because it is all about the balance so seated comfortably uh, most women sit with their legs crossed open those legs up right? and try to sit like almost if you need to like how i'm doing like adjust your seat and you want to sit with your weight balanced on both of your hips you kind of want to sit a little bit on the front not on the cushion of your hip but on the front of your hip when you sit on the front of your hip you kind of lift that sacrum or the root which helps to open those chakras right now your hands or the palms can rest usually i like it like a open resting right on my thighs because i'm opening my heart and i'm on the receiving side right when you are on the receiving side you melt your eye or the ego so seated balanced comfortably with the spine tall shoulder relaxed palm open on your thighs Now let's focus on the breath. We talked about the pranic channels, those 340,000 meridians. But focusing on just one at this time, which draws that life force. And as we spoke about, there are three chakras above and below that I would like to focus on expanding our awareness and keeping the seven in between is almost like the open hose where the life force or the prana can flow. So kind of imagine that at the root which is your, your base chakra called Muladhar, there is a seed. And if that seed sprouts and brings the root, let those roots expand, call it the three chakras below. And you can draw the energy from those three, which is the root of the tree, now the trunk, the seven chakras, and you can expand it. Let it go three chakras above your crown, which we call not only the branches of the tree, 
but the energy of the tree. Just think about it, that if the tree is loaded with the flowers or the fruits, it's going to attract some birds, some people. That's what is that aura. And let's pay attention to the breath. Body soft. As you breathe in, you can count one, two, three, four, and we breathe out a little longer. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take another two breaths, same way. Exhaling longer opens the body. Now keep your focus on the breath. And every time you inhale, you want to kind of extend above your crown. See how far you can go. Up in the infinite, opening all the possibilities. Do not judge. Do not entertain. And every time you exhale, Bringing those down, entering from the crown, which is that tree, flowing through that trunk, which are all the seven chakras, your spine, and flowing down to the root and see how far you can go down to the root. The earth has the layers too, and then the water beneath. Then you inhale again from those roots. And let it flow, extend your awareness, go high, up, as far as you can, and as you exhale, blowing it down, letting it flow through, the, we call this body a container. You can visualize the tree as well, let that energy flow. Through the trunk, down to the root. And at a point, you come to the point where this breathing becomes natural. And wherever you are, with the next exhalation, expand your body sideways. Like that trunk of the tree is becoming bigger. So is the tree is becoming bigger. And then expand it from your body. Let that tree become as big as the room. And then as big as a state. Now when it starts becoming that big, you know that you are that tree. But you kind of cannot see that tree as a whole, as big as a state. So keep that awareness, but keep on expanding and melt that huge tree. It becomes one as a universe. Now in that universe, as we talked about, invisibility, we're not seeing, but everything is there. It is up to us how we bring that information through the breath, through the intuition, expanding the intuition. And having it collapse the way we see it. So let's put it simply towards the health. So as we say, not naming anything, but from all those possibilities that I have into the bigger universe, 
I bring the perfect health of the five bodies. And then slowly, slowly, begin bringing your awareness from the universe to the planet, to the country, to the state, to the town, to the house, to your body. So remember, you are part of the big and complete, yet you are big and complete. So when you have that completeness at the five body, why do we care about how someone judges us? Or whether I fulfill that expectation or not, there is a contentment within. There is no rudeness about me or you. If you are me, how can you hurt me? So that one is. Or if that condition is me, how it can hurt me? So that contentment. So keeping that awareness, I'm a part of being complete, yet I am being complete. And slowly and gently, when you're ready, open your eyes. And then because this is our physical body, kind of warming up with our energy and honor yourself. I always tell people, when was the last time that you touched yourself in honoring loving kindness and say, I like me. It's not rude. It's not arrogant. I like who I am. Oh, that's wonderful. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes, this is amazing. I always meet you just to close the eyes, slow down, and then having this slow breath, right? That just the, all the nervous system, you know, start getting this coherence and calmness up spontaneous. And I know the brain wave is going to start slow down as well. You know, there's all the physiological changes. Yeah. So, even, you know, people have measured the, bra the, the brain waves, right, from the meditation and things like that, you know, from all those alpha, beta, you know, theta and gamma, and the many psychologists give the trainings, you know, for the ADHD or, or that whole delta, theta, uh, you know, coherence and all that. So uh, there is a lot into this. And the one thing you mentioned, Dr. Jun, that the moment we close our eyes, so it is also like our five senses, right? The five senses kind of analyzes our feelings and it decodes, right? And so many times, like how many times we've heard that uh, when someone is nervous, right? They say, oh, I have butterfly in my stomach, right? So that is like, depending on their previous experiences, right? Like, or if they saw someone, you know, who have hurt them or something, right? And it's like they start feeling anxious or nervous. So it is all about that frontal cortex, the eyes, seeing, drawing that information, relating it with your previous experience, right? And giving it a meaning. And when it starts giving the meaning, Remember you mentioned, if it's the wrong meaning versus the right meaning, it's going to start bringing that blueprint at the organ function. And that's when we say that, whether I should have a butterfly in my stomach, right, and that upset stomach, or I should have a good health, right? So when we close the, this uh, other senses, we call it this specifically this frontal cortex where the eye is drawing the information. It can kind of close many of those observations which are our learned behavior in this life, right? And kind of help us connect with our intuitive body. Oh, 
this is all you know the healing starts this is what I love about the conscious healing you know we really consciously paying attention to all this human experience and then we really decoding every aspect of different part of the body the you know, five layer of the body then then, then when your expansion happen this is what the creation creativity you know how the you know, um, human the uh, and then human potential is going to happen right <laughs> Right. Yeah. So my my biggest tip is like, you know, next time if anybody feels about the vibe or the aura, it's okay. You don't have to fit into the box. Just listen to yourself, to your intuition, be complete with yourself, right? And not to be rude to the other, but just, you know, kind of make a sense that it is okay, you know, the magnets right it's okay they can repel i don't have to fit into it right i could just take care of myself and that's not selfish by taking care of you as we say right remember that electron when it loses uh, like there is this orbit right they have to be into the pair like the two or or four or the six into the outer orbit in order to survive now when we become stressful we lose that electron and the orbit becomes uh, unstable and then it either will lose that one electron which is hanging out to the next cell or it's going to snatch a next cells or electron to make its own by doing that one cell would die right so just bringing that that you know why create that stress like i make my own orbit complete and when i'm doing that i'm also helping the the other person or their selves you know to keep their own orbit as a completeness right yeah so just like you know we it's it's okay you know we don't have to fit into that box but i understand and eventually believe it or not eventually as an individual you can make a big difference uh remember the butterfly flipping its wing on the one side of the world creates the wave to the other side of the world you know too yeah and there have been a lot of experiments done on this type of phenomena too right? well thank you so much for sharing guiding us to uh, dive into this aura but beyond the aura this the, all this explanation and then that helps us our lives you know so thank you so much for joining us today <laughs> i i actually just see your aura or or, or the hello around <laughs> your face just like became Your bigger yeah. right Thank you. And, so yeah. everybody please yeah please come to quantumdecoder.com slash can abbreviation of a conscious awakening network we have a full interview and uh, uh, tips and uh, the doctor ends uh, meditation guided meditation practice all available in her contact so you can learn more about it how can i really study about uh, yoga ayurved that's the brilliance of her. She's really, really exploring that idea and then really bring up to that, you know, the consciousness to the world. So thank you, everybody.